Christians vanish. Wow. That means the preacher is no different than whoever's going to stick around and clean up the building when the meeting's over. All distinctions vanish. There's no room and neither can there be. Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised. One scripture says male or female. Nor difference between nations, whether alien, barbarians, or sentients, who are the most savage of all. Nor slave or free men, but Christ is all, and in all, everything and everywhere, to all men, without distinction of person. Isn't that beautiful? So, no matter what happened to you in the past, the moment that you receive Christ as your Savior, everybody is on a level playing field. And the promises of God are for whosoever will. Whosoever will, number one, believe them, and whosoever will, number two, learn the principles of God that must be applied to your life in order to see these promises come to pass. You are a partner with God. You have a part and God has a part. You cannot do His part and He will not do your part. What I just said is extremely important, so I'm going to say it again. You are partners with God. That means that you have a part and God has a part. You cannot do God's part. And God will not do your part. Amen? So there are principles that we have to learn. There are things that we have to learn. So dreaming is good. You need to be able to conceive a dream and a vision for your life. But what if you've got a dream, you've got a vision, you've got an idea, you're praying, you're going to church, you got everybody's CD library, DVD library, <laughs> you've read the books, you've bought the t-shirt, you've done it all. And you've been believing God for a while. And you would just say tonight, well, you know, Joyce, nothing is changing. <laughs> Nothing really is happening. Now, first of all, let me say, just because you don't see anything happening or you don't feel anything happening, that really doesn't mean that nothing's happening. Because one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is what I call the silent years or the dormant season in our life. In St. Louis, the leaves are all starting to fall off the trees, and David and I marvel every year that a tree that was so lush and beautiful just a few weeks ago, in just a few more weeks, would just look like a dead stick. But the interesting thing, if you know a little bit about trees, which a little bit is all I know, but I know enough to get a good lesson out of it, that while that tree looks so dead, there's sap that's gathering up on the inside, getting it ready for spring growth. So you may look quite dead, feel quite dead, you may look to everybody like there's just zero zippo going on in your life. But that does not mean that God is not doing an awesome thing on the inside of you. Amen? So what's wrong if... I've had this dream and vision for a long time. And you can even say I'm tired of hearing people, preachers come in and talk about have a dream, have a vision. I've got a dream, I've got a vision, but nothing is happening. <laughs> Amen? Well, the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, does your goal, your dream, your vision agree with God's Word? Now, I'm not going to try to get overly spiritual here, but the bottom line is, is we know that God is not going to help us do something that's not His will. At least we better hope He doesn't. Amen? And so, it's not just a matter of us getting some kind of a, a dream, but it has to be something that God's Word can agree with. I don't necessarily think that what your goals and dreams are have to be something that you get through a prophecy or a trumpet blast or an angelic appearance. I think it can feel quite natural to you, but it has to agree with God's Word. See, I know that for me to say, well, I've got a dream to feed a million children a day, I know that's okay. God can get on board with that because the Bible already says that He wants us to bring justice. Now, will I ever reach that? I don't know. But I've got to have something to reach for. I can't be static. And I would rather dream a big dream and get part of it than to dream a little dream and get all of it. Amen? So make sure 
knew that your dream agrees with God. Jonah was told by God to go to Nineveh. But he went the exact opposite direction. And he went to Tarshish. You know, sometimes we're going the exact opposite direction that God wants us to go in. And we just don't get it because it's the direction we want to go in. We keep trying to get God to get on board with us. And he's on some other ship going in another direction. <laughs> and if you look at Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh. Pretty plain, isn't it? That great city and proclaim against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. God wanted him to go and confront this sinful nation. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from being in the presence of the Lord as his prophet. Why? He was afraid. He didn't want the responsibility. He didn't want the judgment, the criticism. Who knows? Maybe he didn't like the weather. <laughs> or God was sending him. But he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish, the most remote of the Phoenician trading places then known. So he paid the appointed fare and went down into the ship to go with them to Tarshish from being in the presence of the Lord as his servant and minister. But the Lord sent out a great wind upon the sea and there was a violent tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken. Can I just tell you that if you're on the wrong ship, you're going to have a rough ride. <laughs> Amen? So you've got to make sure that you're on the right ship. You've got to make sure you're on the ship that, that God is on. And that doesn't mean that there won't be any trials and tribulations, but it does mean that you'll sense God's presence and you'll know that He's with you. The next thing I think that you have to make sure of, and this is something that I could probably just preach on the rest of the night, but I'm going to restrain myself from doing it. Hopefully you'll get it quick. The next thing I want to say is you may have a God goal. You may have a God-given goal, but still have an impure motive. Now motives are so important. And I can tell you that even though God called me into ministry 32 years ago, and the call was from God, I mean I had a... I would say a real supernatural call from God. I was making my bed listening to the first teaching tape that I'd ever had. It was a message called Crossover to the Other Side. I still remember it. And I was just so unaccustomed to hearing real anointed preaching that I just could not believe that somebody preached for a whole hour on one verse and kept my interest. And when I finished listening to that teaching tape, I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit just a couple of weeks prior to that. All I can say is like a desire rose up in me. It was like I heard a voice say to me, but it wasn't like it was just in my heart. You are going to go all over the world and teach the Word. Amen. And, and this was the second thing. And you're going to have a large teaching tape ministry. Now that sounds really strange, but if you think about it today, I'm on television through tapes, through duplication, in 38 languages in approximately two-thirds of the world. So God was dead on right 32 years ago, even though I didn't really understand. So I had, I had a, it was a God thing going on. God put a desire in me, and I've had that desire from that day until this. And when you have a desire on the inside of you that's from God, even though sometimes you think it's going to kill you, you won't be able to get rid of it. Amen? Amen. But things were slow going. A lot of storms, a lot of problems. Everything was little. I had a big vision and everything was little. How many of you know if you've got a big vision and everything's little, it doesn't make you too happy? <laughs> and so, I didn't know about not despising the day of small beginnings, and I didn't know about all the things that I'm going to tell you about tonight and tomorrow, because I you to make it to the end, the fulfillment of your dreams and visions. I want you to finish your race. Whatever that might be. If it's just to get your house cleaned up, I want you to finish your race. Because I know there's people sitting there thinking, well, I don't have a worldwide 
me, you know, I'm just trying to survive every day. Well, that's cool. But even if your vision is to get to the point where you can be a peaceful person, where you can be stable, where you can have bad circumstances but not let them shake you and just stay the same, there's all kinds of